Evolution took billions of years on Earth to develop the human hand. However, the field of robotic grasping and manipulation only began its evolutionary journey shortly before the 1990s. Coming up, we'll share what will perhaps be defined as a major milestone in the intelligent manipulation and grasping technologies endeavor. All of that and more coming up on Automator's Edge. University of Bristol researchers have unveiled a highly tactile four-fingered robotic hand that can manipulate objects from any angle while even defying gravity. The Any Rotate system revolutionizes pick and place tasks and paves the way for more complex applications. But how does it work? The tactile system emulates the sensory mechanics of human skin using a 3D printed Puppali mesh that combines hard and soft materials. This enhances the hand's dexterity and functionality. Through targeted training, the hand can now manipulate objects even when used upside down. Coming up, we'll explore how to bridge the sim to real gap with this amazing system, something you definitely won't want to miss. But first, it's our premier product highlight, sponsored by Mauser Electronics. The Fluke A31 laser shaft alignment tools come equipped with a durable Sense Align 3 sensor and reflector, capable of tackling most common machine alignment issues. These tools feature a unique extend mode for handling significant misalignment and an integrated thermal growth calculator that adjusts for dynamic machine changes. They offer quick setup in a user-friendly interface with a tablet-like design. Additionally, the Fluke A31 includes an integrated Wi-Fi cloud solution for seamless data transfer from the handheld device to ARC 4.0 PC software. The Fluke tools help keep your plan up and running. To learn more, visit mauser.com today. It's time to burn on all cylinders. It's time to talk pneumatic cylinders. It's time for David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about pneumatic cylinders. While they themselves might not be electrically controlled, we don't see wires coming and going from a pneumatic cylinder, since they're controlled by solenoids, they provide the action out at the end of a robotic arm or in some sort of a mechanical assembly where motion needs to happen. So they're a fascinating device, but there's a few components inside of these pneumatic cylinders. Here's an example of a small one. And it has the cylinder part that extends and retracts, and this one is called a double acting cylinder because air is inserted to both extend it, air is also inserted to retract the cylinder. Some of them that are called single acting have a spring that's either behind the piston or in front of the piston so that once the air is removed from one of the ports, it will automatically go back to a safe location. Another very common area where these double acting cylinders are used are in robotic grippers. Now this doesn't look a whole lot like custom made robotic grippers because the internal workings of it are simply a very th short throw pneumatic cylinder inside of a housing with ports that allow air to come in and out and extend and retract. It's another example of a small double acting cylinder. Now in reality, outside of this assembly would be some small gripper fingers connected onto it. Fingers that are custom designed to pick up whatever object your robot and your facility are designed to work with. These are just a couple of the applications of pneumatic cylinders, and one of the great things about air is that air systems can be expanded and they can be modified very easily, and the power, the electrical power for the solenoids can all be contained in one central location, and all of the peripheral devices expanded out into the field without having to expand our electrical network. So they're very convenient, very fast to operate, and the systems are often very flexible and very easy to use. Andy, back to you. Okay, so how do we bridge the SIM to real gap with any rotate system? The any rotate system enables versatile in-hand object manipulation across multiple axes and directions, regardless of gravity. It uses a tactile center and force torque sensor to gather complex data, which is then processed by a convolutional neural network or CNN for simulation and analysis. CNNs are deep learning frameworks designed to interpret and analyze visual data. They operate by applying filters through convolutional layers to create feature maps which identify characteristics like corners, textures, and pattern in images. 
The CNN interprets tactile images and contact forces to enhance the system's performance. This level of robotic and hand manipulation is full of possibilities for humanoid robots. But what do you think will be the next hands-on challenge? Here's to hoping it can assist with Legos. Hey, that does it for this edition of Automator's Edge. Stay updated on all things control automation by checking out our other videos, and we'll see you soon.